Did you know a 3D printer is a CNC machine? That means you can use it for other tasks other than 3D printing. Just as a quick proof of concept to see if it could actually work, I've taken off the E3D hot end and I just have the cables and the hot end itself just hanging off the side of the printer. And I've clamped in a pen. Now the pen that I have is just a stock standard ball, ballpoint pen. But the diameter of the pen is just a bit too small for the E3D clamp. So a dozen layers of tape on the outside of that pen allows me to clamp that to the E3D. I'm still using the inductive sensor for the uh, z-axis homing and I have the pen uh, sticking about as low or maybe a little bit lower than where the uh, the E3D nozzle would have been so with just that quick change I've transformed this 3D printer into a 2D plotter so this will be my first attempt in using the Hypercube 3D printer as a two-dimensional plotter. And the pen here is just a spare biro pen that I had lying around. Uh, this is a proof of concept only. I've seen plenty of YouTube videos and articles online, so it doesn't sound too hard. And as a bonus to drive the 3D printer, we can use Cura to slice an image into G-code. In Cura, you can load an image. This can be used to create 3D printed lithophanes. It works by creating layers based on the contrast of the image. You specify the number of layers and it creates those layers in a gradient from lightest to darkest, or vice versa. But for a plotter, we need to make a few adjustments. Upon loading an image, we're greeted with a settings box. Here, we stipulate the image height, a base thickness, and the size of the image. Set the base to zero, but the height will be a multiple of the layer height. I use 0.02 millimeters for the image height, which will provide two layers when plotting at a 0.01 millimeter layer height. Also adjust the size of the image. For our settings, set the layer height to 0.01 millimeters. Set the shell thickness to the same as the nozzle. Now we don't have a nozzle, we have a ballpoint pen but I'm keeping it at 0.4 millimeters as that's the approximate line width that is produced by the pen on a piece of paper. We definitely want to ensure enable retraction is set and we want to lift the uh, z-axis when retracting. So I'm lifting the z-axis by one millimeter here. That is so the pen doesn't draw across the paper when it's moving from uh, location to location. We set the bottom and top thickness to zero I'm setting the infill to zero here, but that could be uh, anything you wish. I'm setting the print speed quite slow, only 15 millimeters a second, as I'm not sure how fast the pen can deposit ink onto the piece of paper. So we'll see how we go. And we want to send, set both temperatures to zero. We do, don't want to turn on the hot end or the heated bed. And moving over to the advanced tab, the nozzle size is 0.4. We want to set the initial layer thickness to zero. We also want to ensure the bottom layer speed is the same speed as your print speed. And we also don't want to use the cooling fan. And for our first image, I'll be drawing this high wheeler bike. And this is what it looks like in Cura. You can just see it there behind that mesh that is covering it.
And here is the result from my first attempt with using the printer as a 2D drawing machine, a plotter. Now this is a high wheeler bike, I just found this uh, online. The very first thing I did before actually printing this was to adjust the height of the pen. And this line over here is me adjusting the height while moving it. And as you can see, uh, the actual print isn't perfect. I'll zoom in here, you can see there's a lot of lines going uh, all over the place, zigzagging throughout. And I did set the Z uh, hop feature to lift the pen by one millimeter, but it seems that some print moves weren't actually lifting the, uh, the Z axis. So we need to go into Cura and change some settings. So we need to adjust the retraction settings. Let's open up the retraction settings, change the minimum travel to zero, turn off enable combing, we'll make that off and change the minimum extrusion before retracting to zero. And you'll also notice when the print started, the nozzle was acting, well, the nozzle, the pen was actually dropping uh, while it was moving to the first coordinate. So as it was dropping, you could see it started to write on the paper before actually beginning. So we need to go into the uh, resulted G code file and just edit out one or two uh, segments where it's telling the uh, pen to drop during the first print move. To fix the pen from sliding across the image when it starts, we want to disable where it lowers the z-axis. So here, at the start of the g-code, we have the z-axis here is at one millimeter height, that's good. And then here it's moving the pen to this x-coordinate, this y-coordinate, and it's also moving down to this z-coordinate all at the same time. We can move the x and y there, but let's not move the Z down, so I'll edit that out with a semicolon. And as you can see, when it starts the print anyway, it's already put this particular G code to lower the Z. So that's actually redundant. This way the, the print head will be one millimeter high, it'll move to that location, and then drop, and then start printing. But as a first print, I'm really happy with this. I haven't actually drawn anything like this on a 3D printer, so to, to even get a print that kind of resembles the actual image that I've tried to, to print is a win and I think it can only get better from here. So let's try this again with those changes in Cura and see what the result is. And here's the high wheeler bike again with the two changes made from the previous print. It looks much neater. You can see there are no more zigzags where the pen was printing during non-print moves. But what you'll notice is it was never actually printing anything in a straight line. So all these spokes around the wheel, they were all kind of squiggly. And you would have noticed the pen was uh, moving up and down and kind of just making little dots all over the place rather than uh, efficiently drawing the print in one print move. And we'll go over that in a second. And just comparing this particular print with the original one, looks quite similar. And for print times, this first image took 18 minutes to complete, and this second one took 25 minutes to complete. And for the next test drawing, this is a B-17 Flying Fortress, a bombing plane used during World War II. And just like the high wheeler drawing from previous, a lot of the detail is kind of lost in this image. The pen was moving up and down and just producing dots in a lot of places, and there aren't any straight lines here either. Every single line is kind of squiggly. This particular print took 45 minutes 
to complete and it does look like the plane just a lot of the detail is is just gone where there was supposed to be a lot of latticing um, in the open sections it there are just little circles there it doesn't look at all like uh, the interior from the photo there are two types of digital graphics files vector and raster Vector images are made of thousands of tiny lines and curves to create an image. And vector images are perfect to be converted via software for an XY plotter. A raster image uh, is composed of tiny dots or pixels. These are the images that you take with a digital camera. And the two images that I've imported into Cura thus far, the B-17 bomber and the high wheeler, have been raster images. They've been made of tiny dots. And unfortunately, Cura doesn't have an import for a vector image. It only accepts raster images. So the next best thing is to use, an, use a raster image that originated from a vector image. That means we'll have a high contrast between bright and dark, and Cura will do a great job in converting that file to be printed. And here is the Porsche, which originated as a vector file, converted to raster, and finally imported into Cura. Cura did a great job of slicing this, allowing the, the 3D printer to plop this on the piece of paper. The detail has come out really sharp using this method. And you saw the pen wasn't bobbing up and down while printing this. It was following the path and perimeters of all these, uh, all the detail for this Porsche. And you could even see the infill. It was producing the nice crosshatch, uh, nice and straight. In fact, as this was printed in three layers, it had to double back on one of the infill uh, hashes and they are perfectly lined up. So this is, I guess, another test to see how accurate your 3D printer can print. This print took 14 minutes to complete, and that's testament to the efficient way the pen was moving around uh, the perimeters and printing the infill. The pen wasn't simply bobbing up and down all over the place. But you will see there is actually a problem here. Near the back rear tire, we have these two streaks. And what I've noticed is happening is, as this was printed in three layers, during each layer transition, not only was the pen moving uh, from over here somewhere to over here to start the next layer. But it was also uh, dropping the pen at the same time. So there was a z-axis command while this non-print move was occurring. So again, we can go into the G-code, find where that is, and edit that out. We can open the G-code in Notepad, search for the next layer, and we can see what the G-code is telling it. It's raising the pen here, then it's moving to the new X and Y coordinates here, but it's also interpolating dropping the z-axis. So at a semicolon, we don't want the pen to drop while it's moving. Anyway, it's adding that pen drop command here. So once again, this is a redundant command. We can let this drop the pen and it'll continue printing the next layer. You're probably wondering why use a 3D printer to create 2D drawings on paper when you can just use a standard printer for that. Well, the answer there is we can use any type of uh, pen that can fit into your holder. So we can, we can print in many materials. We can print on top of many materials. It doesn't have to be paper. It could be, for example, a copper plate. You could make your own PCBs. You could print on top of a hard surface where a normal printer can't print on top of a hard surface. Not only that, I've got bigger plans for this. The Hypercube or any printer can be used as a CNC machine, so why limit it to just a hot end when we can have multiple mounts on your X carriage? So that's something that I'll be designing moving forward, is multiple mounts 
To start off with, we've got a pen holder for a plotter. Moving on, we'll have a laser engraver. Following that, we'll have a, a mill for a, for a drill bit, for example. So the possibilities are endless. This is going to be a very useful tool moving forward. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you next time.